The reason 98% of new software developers are not getting job offers is because they are not doing these 11 things. Your due. So there's a ton of things that you don't know and that's okay, it's perfectly normal. You're gonna make mistakes and forget things during the job interview. What is super important is that you demonstrate your confidence in your ability to figure it out. Why should we be confident that you will succeed on our team if you aren't even confident in yourself? We're probably going to ask you a bunch of questions to figure out two things. First, we wanna know what areas you're good at and bad at because we wanna know if your good areas are a match for the skills that we are looking for. Second, we wanna know if you're a good culture fit and how you respond to tough situations. Do you get incredibly frustrated when you get stumped? Do you throw in the towel easily? Do you get confrontational? We really wanna weed out people who get upset, rude, or just plain give up on hard things because those things really hurt the morale and effectiveness of a team. For example, during my first interview for a front end position, the hiring manager spent most of the time grilling me on back end stuff and math problems. I later learned that he wanted to know how I would react in a stressful situation when I was out of my element. Also, don't talk badly about past coworkers, bosses, or projects. We can help you get up to speed learning new technologies, but it is practically impossible to teach a toxic person to not be toxic. If you trash talk them, then you're eventually going to trash talk us and nobody likes that. Number two, you really need to demonstrate that you are a good fit for our team. And to do that, you should have spent the time trying to research and figure out what it is we are looking for. And then when you get to the interview, you need to ask us early on what we're working on and try to show that you are a fit for our needs. And here's a little secret. Our actual needs might be completely different from whatever HR put on the job listing. Half the time they don't even know what they're trying to find and so they'll just use some boilerplate requirements or they're just casting a really wide net. For example, my first job offer was for an AngularJS position and the team actually needed someone to work on a Sencha Touch application. So I ended up having to learn Sencha Touch and it was several months before I ever even touched AngularJS code. Number three, how well do you know the basics of your programming language? For example, if you're working with JavaScript, you should be comfortable with conditional logic, using objects, iterating through arrays, and there are a bunch of ways to do this functionally with map, filter, reduce, and similar methods. You can also do it non-functionally with for loops and while. Do you know how to add, remove, and replace items from arrays and strings? How to split and join strings? It is really hard predicting what algorithm problem might be asked, but it's safe to assume that you will likely be tested on some of these core concepts on a regular basis. For each algorithm question that I've received during an interview, I've been asked at least 10 to 15 core JavaScript, HTML, and CSS questions. Number four, how well do you know the basic functionality of a popular framework? For front-end development, that would include React or Angular. Can you explain how the components work? How do you pass data in and out of the components? How do you compose larger components from smaller ones? And how do you manage the application state? When would you choose to use Angular over React and why? If you're applying for backend work, why would you use Spring Boot over something else? Number five, on paper, you probably look just like a hundred other new software developer applications. How are we supposed to know you got the skills or are you just all talk? The last thing that we want to do is to hire you only to find out that you don't know anything and then have to turn around and let you go. That's a waste of both of our times and it's not very pleasant. So show, don't tell. Do you have a portfolio of projects that you've built or worked on? And can you explain why you did what you did? Why you chose one technology over another technology? Is there something unique or complex going on in the code? Tell us about it. After all, we're software engineers, not mind readers. So don't expect us to just know whatever it is you'd like us to find out or notice. When you show up to the interview, it's safe to assume that there's a good chance that we may not have even looked at your portfolio or code samples. And even if we did, we may not have looked that closely because we're all really busy. So if we forget to bring it up, don't be shy. You wanna put your best foot forward and show us your portfolio. So bring your own laptop or an iPad and have your portfolio ready to go. Number six, play to your strengths. Don't overly focus on your weak areas and don't apologize for not knowing something. If you're stumped on something, there are a couple ways to approach this. First, if you flat out don't know anything about it, just acknowledge that you don't know or remember the answer and let us know that you'll definitely look into it later and just let this roll off. Don't let it jar your confidence. It's not game over unless you clam up. Second, if you happen to get stuck on a part of a problem, but you remember the rest of it, don't just shrug and give up. And now pay attention here. This is a super skill that most people don't do. Acknowledge that you don't quite remember this step, but then explain everything else that you do know and what you would do next and what you would do to find the missing pieces. 
if you just give up, we are left to assume the worst about you. This is the exact thing that happened to me during the interview that landed me my first dev job. I was totally stumped on some syntax pretty early on into solving a problem. So I set down the marker and I verbally explained everything else I could think of that was related to that topic. This ended up turning into a conversation that went about 30 minutes over the set time for the interview. Several years later in the interview, we handed a MacBook to an experienced software engineer to do some coding, but he was used to Windows. He kept struggling because if you push too hard on the trackpad, it pops up the dictionary and interrupts typing. Instead of being frustrated, he ended up laughing and stopped typing and then just started explaining things. I'm really glad we ended up hiring him because he ended up becoming one of my favorite software developers. Another way to play to your strengths is to pretend that you are a politician and look for natural ways to steer the conversation to topics that you do know. Without knowing much about you, we have to just take a stab in the dark a lot of times. We probably bring up a bunch of different generic questions and topics to try and figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. So help us out, be proactive in sharing what you do know. And this goes beyond just code. Do you have additional insights? Do you have experience making business decisions where you had to balance out doing something perfectly against delivering the most return on investment for a business? Let us know about it. Seven, treat the interview like a conversation. If we ask you to do a code problem, don't just jump the gun and start answering before we've even finished talking or start working through things in your head while we're still trying to explain things. Instead, focus on understanding what we're saying and then ask us as many follow-up questions as needed until you know exactly what we want and then start solving the problem. And this is crucial. In asking questions, you'll find out if we're okay with you using libraries or you'll learn about different edge cases that you might need to consider. And basically you're demonstrating that you're the type of software developer who's going to take the time to really think through a problem first and then write code rather than having to rewrite the same code multiple times or worse, miss a really important edge case. Now you're gonna feel pressure to answer quickly because it is an interview, but you need to push back against that self-imposed pressure. The silence in the room will definitely be awkward for you while you're thinking about things but it will be worth it. And if anyone does give you a hard time for it, then congrats, you figured out that that's a place that probably has some dev culture issues that you probably don't wanna work at. Eight, did you spend too much time on leak code instead of building a portfolio? Now, this is kind of a tricky one to balance. Spending a lot of time on leak code can definitely help you develop problem solving skills that can help you with technical interview questions that you will eventually encounter. But this does not mean that you're actually going to become good at building applications. And what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is building applications. And for me personally, I would much rather hire someone who can demonstrate that they can build apps over someone who has memorized solutions to a ton of different leak code questions. But admittedly, software development interviews are kind of messed up in a lot of ways. A lot of what you encounter comes down to the people doing the interview. Even teams at the same company will often do things differently. For example, is the interviewer more interested in discussing everyday situations and code problems, or have they bought into the cracking the code interview book paradigm? I think the low level algorithm approach to interviews is often flawed because most of us just don't do this on a regular basis. And besides, typically the programming languages that we are using have built-in utilities to solve a lot of this stuff or else we will use third-party libraries and in the case where we actually have to come up with an algorithm on our own we have plenty of time to think through it to whiteboard and plan and prepare and then write the code without the pressure of someone just looking over our shoulder so that they can see if we're going to do it exactly the way that they want in a super short amount of time when they've had plenty of time to really refine and tweak the problem over the course of several interviews and yet it's just thrown at you without any advance notice and you're supposed to see things the way that they do. It just doesn't make tons of sense. That said, this is one of the competitive advantages that lead code experts and recent college graduates have who have memorized some of the stuff for quizzes. But even CS grads usually forget a lot of the stuff and have to brush up on it when they're going to go into a tech interview that is likely to be asking these type of algorithm questions. And trust me, I know plenty of senior software engineers who've been rejected for a job because they stumbled on an algorithm problem that they haven't even thought about or considered for the last 20 years. But sooner or later, you are going to encounter these kind of interviews 
and you're gonna win some and you're gonna lose some, so don't take it personal. I've even received lots of job offers and I've lost some because I didn't quickly solve an algorithm question that had nothing to do with anything that I have ever worked on. Then to make things even more confusing, there are a bunch of ways to do algorithm tests. You might end up having to write it out on a whiteboard and this can really suck because you can run out of space. I mean, outside of interviews, I rarely write code syntax on whiteboards. Most of the time, if I'm using a whiteboard, it's because I'm just mapping out the relationship between different things and, and jotting down some concepts and working through some of the logic, but I don't actually write code on the whiteboard. I write it in a code editor because that's what makes sense. Or they could hand you a laptop to solve a problem on. What if it's not that operating system or code editor that you're used to working on? Or they send you one of several different online assessments. Now you have to kind of figure out how to actually use the testing software in addition to solving the problem all in a short period of time. Just don't flip and give up because the difference between a good interview and a bad interview is just a matter of the stars lining up right. There are things that you can do to prepare and then there's just some luck that's involved because out of the thousands of different questions that someone could possibly ask you, does the interviewer happen to pick ones that actually align with your skills or do they pick something completely unrelated? And this leads into number nine. You need to come into this with the right mindset and expectations. Failing lots of interviews is not a good indication of your future as a software developer. So you need to learn from them and move on. I mean, in a few years, you're gonna look back and you're not even gonna care about all those interviews that you bombed because the only ones that are gonna matter are the ones that you actually accepted. Frankly, passing interviews is its own skill and even good software engineers are gonna bomb interviews so what you're experiencing is not something new, it's not unique to you, and sometimes it just comes down to simple math that there could be several really good candidates for a job and there's only one position. And the difference between you and the dev that actually gets the job might be super, super small. For example, at my last job, it was pretty much a draw between me and another software developer and it was a recommendation from another employee that ultimately tipped the scale in my favor. Number 10, ask us thoughtful questions. Show some interest in our company and in our team. So ask us things that we like to do, what frameworks and tools the team likes to work with, maybe why we chose to work with React over Angular, ask questions about the company, and don't be afraid to ask personal questions about us. You gotta remember that an interview goes both ways. You should be trying to figure out if you even want to work with us. And also by asking questions, you're creating interpersonal connections, which can really help us to remember you when we're trying to look back over a bunch of different candidates that we've interviewed. And then it's also going to help you because you can take these insights and you can apply them to future interviews if this one doesn't work out. Number 11, don't get greedy with your first job and don't try to compare yourself to that self-taught Ivy League grad who ended up getting his first job at Google at Google Pay. And don't go around throwing some super high crazy salary out there because some dude on the internet did and happened to luck out and got it. For most of of us that first job is probably not going to pay that great or it's going to be okay pay but we just need to get into whatever job we can and start getting experience and then the higher pay will come faster than you think and i'm going to do something that i wish someone had done with me and i'm going to be totally transparent here you can watch this video up here where i'm going to share how much i made at each of my jobs as a software developer lates